Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, we are going to design a 3D button interaction in Figma. Really simple to do. And 3D buttons are getting really popular these days. So let's see how can you build one using just Figma. So yeah, let's get started. So we're in Figma right now and let's start with the artboard. I'll hit A on my keyboard and I'll pick iPhone 14 from the preset. I want to build a dark themed app. So I'll just make the background as black and let's just put some dummy UI here so that it doesn't look like a blank screen. So I'm just putting a dummy icon as well as a text so that just looks more like a app UI. So let's do that. Now what we want to do is we want to add our 3D button here at the bottom. So let's start building that. So first what I'll do is I'll just quickly add a text. So this is how the text looks like on the button. Now what I have to do is I'll just select this and hit option command G on my keyboard to add them in a frame. And it will be alt control G on the Windows devices for max option command G and it'll club this text into a frame. Okay, so I'm going to rename it to button. Now what you have to do is you have to change the dimension of this frame, not the dimension of the text, but the frame. So I'll select the frame here on the left, if you see, and uh, I'll give something like a 300 size, central line it, and a height to be something around 62. Okay. And I'll give it a fill so that you can see this is how it looks like. And the text is gone. So I'll just make the text black as well. Okay. So this is the frame that we have created 300 by 600. This is the buttons background. And what I have to do is I just have to align the text in the center. So I'll just select the text and center align it into the frame. Okay. And we also have to give some rounded corners. So I'll give something like 20 as a rounded corner. Looks good. Okay. And uh, I don't want a white color. So I just want to add some poppy colors here. So I'll just come here and I'll select a yellow. Okay. So this is how the button will look like. Now the next thing that we have to do is we have to build a shadow uh, element behind it. So that looks 3D. So what I'll do is I'll come here. We have to create a rectangle actually, which is exactly the same dimension as this uh, button. So what I'll do is I'll hit R on my keyboard and I'll create a rectangle here and you have to give exactly same dimensions. So 362, which is the exact same dimension of this button. Similarly, we have to give 20 radius as well. And what I'll do is I'll just move it down. I'll move this button up. Now what you have to do is you have to add a little darker color than this button so that it looks like a shadow. Okay, so it will give a 3D effect, nice 3D effect. So I'll come here and I'll select a little darker color like this. And what you have to do is you have to make sure that the button on this, uh, the button that we have created, it's above the shadow layer. So I'll just move it up. And what we will do is we'll just move our button down. And if you see, it's already started looking a little 3 d because of that shadow that we have created. Now what you have to do is you have to select the button and you have to select the rectangle, the shadow that you have created. And again, combine them in a frame. So you can either do it by right clicking and converting into frame, or you can do option command G on your keyboard. Okay. So now this has been converted into a bigger frame and it contains all the elements. Now I'm going to call it 3D button. Okay. And this will be here. So our button is now ready. What we have to do now is we have to create the interaction states. So what I'll do is I'll just move it out of this artboard. Don't worry, we'll keep it back. But for now, just move it out of the artboard so that we can work with it. And what we have to create is we have to create two more states. So this will be the uh, resting state. Then one other state will be a hover state and the next will be a press state. So we have to create three uh, usual states for a button. So what I'll do is I'll just duplicate it once. And let's, uh, let's first create a hover state. So in hover, what we want to do is um, we want this button to go a little up. Okay. So that there is a more separation when you hover over these things, it will just slightly uh, move up. So what I'll do is I'll select, I'll come here and I'll select the top part. Okay. And I'll just move it a little bit up. Something like this maybe. Okay. So we'll just move it a little bit up. So when you hover over it, it raises up 
and when you click on it it presses down so that's how the interaction will be so you have hover you have resting now let's build one more state which will be the press state and guys make sure that you don't change the frame dimension so if you see the frame dimension is still the same for the first one so if you change the frame dimension then you will see repositioning and we don't want that in the animation so even if it's going out a little bit that's perfectly fine make sure that the clip content is off okay now let's create the uh, third stage which is the press state okay in the press state what we want to do is we want this button to go a little down now you have to do it in a subtle way so you have to move the upper bit which is this press me button a little down and also the shadow a little up so that the movement is from both sides okay so just move it a little up and move the above one a little down and just completely overlap the uh, shadow so in the press state you won't be able to see any shadow in the hover state it raises up and in the resting state you will see some depth okay so these are the three states i hope you understood it very simple resting hover and pressed now what we have to do is we have to just combine them in a variant and we'll do the uh, prototyping so now what we will do is we'll select all of the three uh, variations that we have built and go on top and select create component set so once you do that it will create these three variants now what you have to do is uh, let me first of all actually uh, increase the boundary of this component so that we can see everything properly okay and now what we have to do is we just have to link these three variants together in prototyping mode so what i'll first do is i'll just select the first resting state and when somebody hovers over it i should be able to go here so i'll just link first to the second and instead of on tap you want while hovering so when somebody hovers over this button we should go here property one to the next button perfect smart animate gentle 300 milliseconds we want the animation to be a little faster so we are picking up 300 millisecond you can play around with different settings here if you want like a little bouncy slow custom spring you can test it out here i'm just going with gentle as of now okay so while hovering i'll come here and let's say when i don't hover on this button i should be able to go back to this state again okay so we have to create a reverse flow as well so i'll select this plus option i'll select my second variant and i'll reverse link it to the first one and we don't want on tap we want mouse leave so once your mouse leaves from the second button you should be able to go back to your first and if you see here you'll get the small icon so it shows this uh, delay option so you don't want 300 millisecond you don't want to wait 300 milliseconds to go back to your previous state you want to happen immediately so i'll select something around 30 milliseconds of time delay really a less time delay so that once you are away from this button you should be able to go back okay so property went to back to this 3d button amazing smart animate gentle and 300 milliseconds so i'm just keeping this sort of animation value same for everything okay so i hope you understood it we have to do mouse leave here awesome so our first interaction state is complete we have linked first to the second now on the second state if i select and if i press this one i should be able to go to the third state so i'll just link the second to third and here it's perfectly fine we want it to be on tap so we want when somebody clicks on it then only it goes to this state so on tap change to property one to this perfect smart animate gentle 300 milliseconds awesome so uh, once the press state is there so what we also want is after the button is pressed we should be able to go back to the original state after some time so the button is clicked it should always resume to its original shape so what can we do is we can just come here in the last one and select and add it to the first link back to the first frame and instead of on tap we want this to happen automatically so after you have clicked it it should automatically resize to its original state and we don't want after delay to be 800 milliseconds we want it to be somewhere around um, probably somewhere around 100 milliseconds we can change it and play after this and smart animate gentle same so perfect this looks awesome now i have to uh, call out a caveat here so if you see um, i can also click this button uh, but i've done from here to here only hover because in website you first sort of hover i mean you first sort of enter the button and then you click it so this state will be inevitable it'll automatically go here and then click whereas in your app when you're you're doing a mobile device there is no hover state so in those cases if you're building this specifically for an app you can uh, remove this bit you can remove the second section and you can create only two buttons this and this 
uh, resting state and a press state and uh, you can just link these two together you can remove this uh, option so that's how it will work interaction you have to keep this one i'll show you how to do two buttons also but that's a small thing to keep in mind while designing for web as well as for app okay i'll go to my assets tab and i'll pick my button if you see it's available and i'll place it somewhere here looks good i'll select in my prototyping tab i will add a, a phone shell and now let's see how this looks like so our ui is here let's see how it looks like so if i hover it's going a little bit up so if you see it's raising up a little bit so really nice interaction now if i click it's getting pressed woohoo hover pressed hover pressed okay hover pressed so this looks absolutely amazing if you see right so this is how it works and um, this is how it looks like if you're only building it for let's say app then you can uh, skip the hover button and i'll show you how that looks like so if you're only creating it for app where there is no hover state you can just do simple uh, two states where you have a, uh, a resting state and a press state and you can just link them uh, in the simple way so the forward flow will be on tap similar interaction and the reverse flow will be after delay 200 milliseconds okay so let's see how this looks like so in this state we only have two interactions so if i hover nothing is happening because it's a mobile device and if i click you see a really nice animation happening okay so that's how you create a simple button. Now, if you want to top it a little bit up, like you want to also create some sort of more animation when this press state happened, you can also do that. Let me quickly show you that as well. It's just a brownie point. You're done here actually. But if you want to build a little bit more uh, fun to this element, you can do one more thing. So let's say I want to add a small animation when this button is pressed. So what you can do is you can come to this press state variant. Let's say I'm here and you see variant two is here. What I can do is I can just come here and quickly add, let's say a animation so i have picked lottie file animation from here this is a gif uh, of a confetti happening so i've picked this from lottie files and you can just add it here just add it in your button okay and this is how it will look like uh, i'll just rename it to confetti nothing you don't have to do much you just have to get this sort of um, lottie file from lottie plugin and create a gif it's a small gif and just add it into your press state okay and I've given a black background. Uh, you can choose whatever background you want. You can configure that in the Lottie files. So let me just also quickly show you that once we are here. Okay, so whatever animation you feel like using, you just select that animation and you can change the background to whatever you feel like. Since my app background is black, I picked it black. If you want, you can also get transparent from here. You can just reduce the opacity and you can get a transparent GIF and you can insert that GIF to your designs. So that's what I have done. I've just added this to my press state button and I have done nothing else. Let's see how this looks like. If you see, there's a nice animation happening because that animation, that uh, Lottie animation that you see, it's this confetti going from bo bottom to top. And I've added it to the press state. So if I do that, that's how it's working. And this looks absolutely amazing. And that's how you make simple 3D buttons in Figma. I hope you like this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in my next video. Take care. Bye-bye.